Hello. Hope you're having an amazing day. My name is Anita and I have got today a fountain pen collection video. I have to admit I was feeling a little overwhelmed and just indecisive about how to approach this because my collection is so random because that was the beginning of my journey. It was so random, but it's okay. You know, life can be messy and my collection, while it's now evolving, it was a little messy at the start and you know what, that's okay. We're just talking about pens and it's they're just pens. So anyway, what you're looking at now are my currently inked pens for the month of March. And yeah, um, some of them are almost dry, some are not. That's okay. I just didn't want to, want to start with an empty screen. But um, yeah, I've got pens in cases. I haven't quite decided on storage. Or I'd have like a cute storage thumbnail. No, I didn't have that. I am still indecisive about storage. If I'm getting cases or like physical wood cases or am I going to use acrylic drawers? I don't know. I have not decided. So for now, my pens are in nice economically priced cases from Amazon. So let's get into it. Even though my collection started chaotically, I'm very organized in how I look for things and I tend to look for things by brand. So they're pretty organized by brand. And a lot of the pens I bought early on were definitely under, we'll say $30. I think the most expensive would have been a Twisby, a Twisby Eco to be specific. I haven't tried the Go or the Swipe. So yeah, I wanted to figure out what I liked as far as size, mostly, not so much for um, the nibs, because I had a feeling about that, but I didn't know what size I would like. So I tried all kinds of pens straight out of China, mostly. So over here, we have got, I'm not going to pull out every single pen. I'll just show you like a represent, representative pen of the bunch. Um, this is a Jinhao X450. I picked this up on Amazon. It was a set. How does it come off? I, you see, I don't really use these much anymore. Um, There's a set of four pens. This pen probably has a fine nib. And I'm going to tell you all now, my eyesight is rolling on the struggle bus. I'm pretty sure this is fine, though, because I didn't find too much medium when I first started out. And this is my collection one year in. Anyway, um, I got four pens for the low low, and I only really liked <laughs> one of them, to be honest. I haven't even inked all four. I just used a plain black one, and it wasn't bad. I like the size. I wasn't crazy about the nib. The It's a fine nib, pretty sure, but I didn't mind the size of the pen. I was like, oh, I like that size. I will um, figure out what I like that is maybe a better writing experience than this. Try different nibs and maybe try different brands. Once I was learning what I liked, and this is totally not the ideal way to go about it, but this was my therapy last year. So that's those. Those were among the first pens. The very first pen I bought, which sent me flying down the rabbit hole. Let me grab that one because that was a pen that started all of this. Hold on a second. This is the pen and this is the ink that started it all. I saw a video, um, Helen from the Coffee Monsters. And like I said previously in other videos, I will randomly mention, I've used fountain pens off and on for like I don't know, since I was in elementary school, taking my sister's stuff. But I guess about, maybe it was during COVID, I picked up a couple pens that were more than just disposable, like the um, Pilot Varsity. I picked up a Caveco, maybe a Lamy. I don't know where they are now. There's probably in storage somewhere. But I didn't even ink them up. I got inks. I didn't use the inks 
It's probably with the pens somewhere in storage. But I was looking at her video and something just clicked that day. So I picked up this ink because I was really in a, a neutral phase. And I picked up a clear Twisby Eco with an extra fine nib because I was in a fine nib stage. And it just did it. It just something clicked in the place and down the rabbit hole, I fell never to see daylight again. So this was the pen and this Pilot ink were the thing that started me down this rabbit hole. So anyway, back to this. Let's not put the cart too far before the horse. So these were some of the early pens. Um, this saw uh, most of them came from Amazon. Some came from AliExpress. This one came from Amazon. I used it a while back, maybe during the summer. And the ink sample that I used, I think it was spoiled and the pen clogged. And I was like, well, that was a fail. I didn't think it was going to work. I didn't mind the pen too much. I can't see the nib without a magnifying glass. It's probably looking at it. It's probably a extra fine or maybe a fine nib. I don't mind the pen. It's so cute. It kind of made me think of, I don't know, with, when I just glance at it, a cable knit sweater. And I like the colors, so I bought it. I saw this one. The brand is Young Shang or something like that. It looked better in the pictures. I've never inked this pen. And I keep a lot of these because I'm going to penable people. And yeah, I have more pins to show you for my penabling adventures. Anyway, here's another one. I don't think I've inked this one either. I picked it up on Amazon. I think it's G Quill. I forget. I bought it because I like the way it looked. It's got a, either a fine or an extra fine nib and not really my jam. And these also from Amazon. And I can't see the brand. I have it somewhere. I will link these random pens. If y'all want, just comment. I will link them in the description if you're interested. But I tried one of them. They come in multiple colors. I think I used this one. Yeah, it's stained. And I realized, oh, I do like this. I like the size. And I realized I, would, I wouldn't mind spending more money on the, <laughs> the more expensive Twisby. Everything was about, let me figure out what I like. And I would just try things that were so much less expensive and see if I like them. This was Noodler's. It still is. Um, I do lettering, modern calligraphy. And I wanted a flex nib, but I didn't enjoy this one. So I used it once. I may revisit it because this was early on in my journey. Noodler's Ahab, maybe? I didn't enjoy the experience, but I was early on. So I'm going to revisit it and see how I still feel about it. And if I'm still not enjoying it, it will be in the rehome section. All of these are likely to be rehomed at any any point in time. I've already rehomed some of my gin house. Let's do the gin house next. I had so much fun picking these up. I fell down the gin house 82 rabbit hole with this pen and there was another pen that came with it. I got these on Amazon. And I was like, these are so cute. And if this is the size of a Sailor Pro Gear Slim, it's not really for me. They're so tiny. They are so tiny. Let me compare it to another pen real quick. This is a Pelican M205. And these are about the same size. They are so small. I mean, I think for what it is, it's cool. Like if you're just starting out and you think they're cute and all of that. But for me, for long writing sessions, this isn't it, but I use them still just for like jotting down notes. These are what I lovingly refer to as my decoy pens. I don't care if somebody picks one up and wants to use it. I penable with these pens and yeah, they're so cute and fun. You can mix the finials, the end caps, the sections, all amongst each other, and these are not all. I have some more over here in a cup. I just keep them in a cup 
and they are just so much fun. I love these pens and they're good writers more often than not. You never know if you're gonna get one where the nib needs some tweaking and because the pens are so inexpensive, I don't mind practicing my, um, my nib smithing skills on these pens. I don't mind, I practice on these pens too. I have a practice pen. I don't just willy-nilly grab one. I have one that I go to. And then once I'm done with that one, I go on to the next one. I've gone through just three at this point. But yes, they are so cute. All the colors, and they keep coming out with more colors because they know that we pen people are just so addicted to pens, especially when you find one you like and you just buy all the colors. So yeah. I have 20 Jin Hao 82s. I have given away just one of these so far. Just recently, as a matter of fact. Hopefully, the young lady I gave it to likes it. And she will join us in this rabbit hole of loveliness. Back to the case. So, these were some of the very early pens. I think I'm in the frame. Yes, I am. And these came shortly after. Over here, this is the Jin Hao X159. And I tried this. I know it's a dupe for um, a Mont Blanc 149. I'll probably not have one of those. I'm not trying to manifest it or anything. It's just that I don't really care. They're very classic looking pens unless you get one of the more interesting ones because there are just so many collections and stuff. But I wanted to try this for size, and the size mm, usually is okay. When I last used one of these, well, I'm using one that's a little bigger even. It forces me to loosen my grip. I tend to have a death grip on my pens. <laughs> oh, I was so stressed holding a pen, but I don't do that to the same degree with these at all. I'm getting much better about relaxing my grip. So I bought a set of these on Amazon. I've got some pretty fall colors. This is the Jin Hao Centennial 100. I still use these. I have one in my currently inked over here. And I've had good luck with these pens as far as consistency with the writing experience. And they just look so cute. I think they're um, inspired by a Parker pen. I forget the model because I haven't gotten into vintage pens yet. That's a whole nother rabbit hole and I'm not running toward it. I just see it and I am keeping my distance. Yes, I'm keeping my distance. So I picked this one up. I picked up a couple others because I really like the experience of writing with them. And sometimes when you see a pen in a picture, you're not sure if you're going to like it in person. This looks kind of like a Le Bon Rosa in lilac. This is inspired by that one, I think. And this one, inspired by the Montegrappa Elmo, I think. I don't mind them. They're cute. And I have not tried the, any Montegrappa pens at all. They're on the list of to try. I don't really have a list list. I just know that I don't have any and I wouldn't mind trying one. I do have a Le bon. We'll get to that. But... I like these. I am enjoying them. Definitely. I'm still using them. This one is um, a Lorelei 667. And I like the fall colors. I was kind of in a fall frame of mind when I picked this one up. But it's got a fine or extra fine nib. I'm not too crazy about. I have to be in that kind of frame of mind to use it. But it's been a good writer and I have no complaints about it. And it's so autumnal. I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. And then these also picked up relatively early, the first three months of my fountain pen journey, is this. This has been a, a great pen. This is the Asvine or Asvine P20. P because it's a piston filler. They also have um, back fillers. So if you see Asvine V as in Victor or Vac, that means it's a vacuum filler. I have three of these. I have this one, this amber one, which 
this was also good. I got it extra fine by mistake, but like I said, when I'm in the frame of mind, I still use it. And then I have one more. It must be in the to be cleaned pile. Yes, over here, this blue one. I used this last month in my currently inked. I still love it. And I've got a tiny bit of Pelican M Pelican 4001 in here, which is turquoise. It's so, such a good writer, so pretty. Yeah, I still love this pen and I got it and it was kind of, I don't know, kind of an upgrade to what I had been using, except for the Twisby. I like the Twisby, but this has a medium nib. This also has medium nib and I loved writing with them. This one, I don't know. The, the appearance is not my favorite, but I like how it writes. I really like how it writes. So it stays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someday it may get rehomed, but someday hasn't come yet. So I still have it. And what else? This section is mostly, make sure I'm in the frame, mostly um, Lammies and Pilots. Pilots were early on in my journey within that first three months. This was the very first Pilot pen I got. Not a Kakuno, but a Metropolitan. And this, I used maybe a month ago, my currently ink. This has um, a 1.0 stub nib. Oh, wow. I love this. I still love it. I do not love the converter in this pen. This one, I picked it up on Amazon. It has one of these sacks. I find them a little tedious. And the next time I ink it, I'm going to use a cartridge. I will just clean one out and use that instead. But I love the way this pen writes. I still love the way this pen writes. So because I loved it, I bought more. Because <laughs> that's what I do when I love something. I want another one and another one. Oh, I'm feeling purple. I'm feeling gold. I'm feeling green. I'm feeling silver. I haven't used a silver one yet, honestly. But I've used the other three. And I love the way these write. I absolutely love them. Also early on were Pilot Kakunos. This one I have not inked yet. It has a fine nib or maybe it's extra fine. I tried to penable one of my kids and she wasn't going for it. She wasn't ready, but she enjoyed me enjoying pens. So that's cool. But I still use this. This one has a medium nib. Totally still loving this. This one has a fine nib, so I use this one less often. And then I've also got another one. I love these inexpensive pens that write well. This one is one of the newer ones that just came out. Like There's a family of colors, and um, eventually I may have the whole family because that's just what I do. But for now, I just have this one, and the nib is so cute. Can you see? Can you see the face? It's so cute. I'm sorry if you can't. Anyway, I love this pen. I'm This has ink in it. It's got a cartridge and I'm using it. I love that. So these pens were early on in the journey. My first Lamy um, that I actually got into using, because I have um, a couple others that are just missing in action, was this one. It came out and I was like, oh, it's pink. It's so pretty. I want that. And I really like the matching clip. That's like my thing. This one, I swapped nibs. That was fun. And it's got um, a stub nib on it. And I, I love this. I haven't inked it in a while, but it's springtime. So this will be coming out maybe in the next month or two. It won't be in April. I have a plan for April. Maybe in May or June or even July. This is like a real summer vibe to me. And then this one I picked up secondhand because of the color. I love purple. And I don't know if I changed the nib. Not yet. I'm going to. But yeah, I love Lammies. I just need at least, I love a Lammy with a stub nib. And I've got a Vista, which this probably has my least favorite nib. Because I don't know. I don't know why. I have no reason for that. But yeah, I guess I like the colors because they're just so bright and punchy. The, the Vista just doesn't excite me. And I have one other Lamy. 
that I just used recently over here. I picked this one up secondhand also because of the color. I love this color. This is my jam right here. And I guess you can tell looking at the other side that I kind of have a thing for like the blue greens and the <laughs> tealy kind of colors. This side is, I guess I was really figuring it out. I wasn't just willy nilly with the pens. There's another Jin Hao over here, uh, Centennial 100. I just had this inked recently, but the ink I had in it was too light, so it wasn't a good time. But, oh, I do love the pen. The pen writes well. This was a total experiment. I'd been seeing the Pilot Capless, the um, Vanishing Point, and it just looked so funky. I was like, I don't know about that. I don't know about that at all because that clip there is just odd. So I picked this up on AliExpress, I think. And I said, you know what, I'll try it. It has decent reviews from people that I'd seen around the YouTube. And it, it's nice. I was surprised by how much I like it. So can I tell you there's a pilot vanishing point in my future? Because I really like this. This is um, a Mahjong A1. A Majan A1. And I think the nib is extra fine. And I didn't even mind that. I was just so fascinated by that whole clip situation there. This is, I think this is a Hong Sang. I picked this up on Amazon and I plan to ink it up soon. I haven't inked it up in forever. I love the color. This pretty forest green with a bicolored nib. And it's a good writer. I have no complaints about this pen. And it's just, look at that green. It's just so pretty. This is my big old honkin' Jin Hao. It's a 9019. And it's got a huge converter, which is freaking awesome. Can I just say that? It, and you can see it when you need to re-ink it. That's handy. Compared to the X159, you can see it's much bigger. Let me grab a little thing here. Uh, where is it? Here we go. That is the X159, and this is the Dadao. The length is about the same, but the diameter, the grip is bigger in this pen. I kind of like how those look together. You know, you eat with your eyes first, even when you're not eating food. And when you when something just looks nice, you want to, you know, engage with it. So, yeah, I'm like, wow, look at those together. That's a vibe. I like that. So, anyway, this I picked up mm, maybe last fall. And it was a good rider. I like it. But it's just a little too big for me. So, I can't use it for long sessions. This is more comfortable. But I like this because it can hold some ink. And, that, and that's just... I love that. So let me move this to the side. Back to the case. This one here, I just bought it for appearances. This is a Majan M400, I think is the model. And I got it because it looked a little smaller, which let's compare real quick. It is slightly shorter. Slightly shorter than the Jin Hao. It just looked cute. I'm not going to lie. So I picked this up maybe in the um, summer, fall of last year, 2023. And it was a good writer. I think the nib needs a little tweaking. And I haven't used it in a minute. I don't know why they didn't put a gold nib on it. But you know what? Whatever. But it wasn't a bad writer. But the nib needs a little bit of tweaking because it's, it skips a tiny bit. And it's, uh, mm, it's unpredictable enough, but a little too regular. So I need to play with the nib a little bit, but I like the pen. The ink flows well when it flows. <laughs> oh, another Amazon pen. This one I have not inked up yet, and it's on the list of to be inked. And I think this was a, a Hong Dian. Yes, it is. Oh, look at this. Rose gold and white. I mean, is that a vibe, y'all? Look at this. This is so cute. It's a little small for me for long writing sessions, but for short ones, like just jotting notes, I like this. 
This is so cute. Another pen I tried out, which was purchased, um, we'll say the second quarter of my first year, is this one. It's a Pen BBS model 491. This has a, a fine nib, which I was like, eh, I'll try it anyway. I like it. It's a good writer. It is really a good writer. I need to clean it a little bit better. I guess I just ran out of patience for cleaning that day because it's a little bit stained. I had this pen inked for about two or three months. So if I put up with a fine nib for two or three months, I must be enjoying it, right? Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's so cute. And yeah, it's pretty. I love the colors. And yeah, that blue is part of the pen, but it's mostly this tealy turquoisey well tealy kind of green but there's a little bit of blue up in there too and it's just so cute i love this pen i know um, i may pick up another one i'm not in a rush there are so many pens so many pens oh gotta just like take a breath all right i showed y'all the lammy now this one i picked up it's a Jin Hao 80 because i didn't know how i'd feel about the um the lammy 2000 but I enjoyed this. And the cool thing about this pen, and it's super inexpensive, is it can take a Lamy nib. So yo, I put a Lamy nib in it. Put a Lamy medium nib in here and we were off to the races. I totally enjoyed this pen. And I haven't inked it in a while because <laughs> there's always another pen on the horizon. But I like this, I will break it back out and eventually I'll get around to a Lamy 2000 and see what that's like. But I like it, I know I will, because I like this, and they're similar enough that I know I'll be good. But you know, it's not, it's not fancy. It's just, you know, a workhorse looking pen. So I'm not in a rush for a workhorse because I don't need to work that hard writing anything. I'm just keeping it real. Okay, what else is in here? I think we've gone through all the pens in here. Oh, this is a Jin Hao. I don't know when I picked this one up. I'm not gonna lie, I don't remember. But I found it when I was unpacking some stuff that I had in storage. Yeah, so I've never inked it. It looks like it's got a fine nib and it looks just like a Lamy. So yeah, there's that. I will try it out and see what it's like. Maybe I'll just dip test it and maybe that pen will find a new home because it doesn't look bad. I just haven't used it and I like Lamy's, but honestly, like they're good, but I'm not in love with safaris because while I like the monochromatic look of this, I prefer pens that are more interesting to look at, even though, you know, they're pens and they're practical. So I prefer to look at something that looks like this or this, even if I can just see the ink sloshing around, I like that too. So yeah, so it's not my ideal. So I don't know how many more Lamy um, Lamy Safaris or All Stars are in my future because that's just not my jam like that. Oh, I cannot forget the Pilot Preras. I love these. I love them. I love them. I love them. Ooh, I love these pens. They are so good. It was when I was organizing my pens in the cases that I realized you like Pilot pens. These are such good writers. They're small though. Look, I think I did this in a video. They're so small. They're slightly smaller than the Pelican M200 series. Look at that. And this, because this is a piston filler and this takes cartridges. I love Pilot pens. I love Pilot pens. What's wrong with me? Why do I not have more pilot pens? I don't know. I came to this realization about four months ago or so that I really have a thing for pilot pens. So I love these. Oh my gosh. I love them so much. They both have medium nibs. They're both cartridge converter pens, but don't feel like you need to buy a converter because what I did, I just used the ink cartridge that came with it and then I cleaned it out and refilled it don't stress. Oh my goodness. With the black pilot ink, it's a great writer. I love these. And I have another one in my cart now 
Eventually I will pull the trigger, but I, I have no pen emergency, so it's sitting there and it's fine. But I love these two. Oh, they're so good. And while we're on the subject of pilots, let's just get a little pilot party going real quick so you can see how me and pilot get along. So we've got the Prera, we've got the Kakuno. Oh my gosh, I love pilot pens. Let's see, I've got the Metropolitan. We'll try and keep this like a monochromatic thing and not looking crazy. And my most recent pilot outside of this, these three ranges of pilots. I'm sorry, I was just looking for the last one. Is this the pilot E95S? I love this. This was my first and only gold nib pen to this point. And this is such an amazing, amazing writer. I love this pen. It's got an inlaid nib. It's medium. It's never done me dirty in any way, shape, or form. I've only ever used standard inks in it, though. I mean, I've, I just recently really got into the shimmering inks, and honestly, it's like, eh, It'll pass. I like standard inks, I'm not gonna lie. I love this pen. I love, I love this pen. Look at it. I love Pilot pens. So I see probably um, a 743 in my future. I don't think I want a piston filler. I love piston fillers, but when I think about the long term, it's easier to replace a cartridge converter than to deal with the whole piston situation if you're new. And I'm, I'm just thinking like long, long term, if my children, not to be morbid, inherit pens, I don't want them to struggle too hard if they decide to keep any. Does that sound bad or is that just like way practical? But anyway, I love pilot pens. I have never had a bad pilot pen experience and hopefully that keeps up. All right, let's get set for the next batch of pens. Up next, my Twisbees. All right, can I just say that when I got the first Twisby, totally clear, eco, I said, there's no need for all those colors. How do you pick a color? You don't pick a color. At least I don't. When I can, I just want all the colors. So here are my Ecos. I kind of have a rainbow situation going here. I love my egos. I have had nothing but good experiences with this pen, with this brand, and I'm so glad about it. So I have been just collecting whatever I can, and I do use them. I don't just collect them for the sake of having the rainbow in my, in my purse. I actually use the pens, and I love them all. I really do. Most of them have medium, broad, or stub nibs, but I do have a couple of fines and extra fines. And I love them. So these are the Ecos, most of the Ecos. I've got more Ecos over here, the transparent ones. And then I've got the indigo bronze over here, the cream rose gold or creme, however you want to say it, and then white and rose gold. And then I've got the Diamond 580s. I These are my favorites. I love these. I don't know what it is exactly about it. I don't know. Maybe it's just the aesthetic. I don't know. I'm not really going to try to analyze myself on this one. I just like these a little bit better, but there are more colors of the Egos. So yeah, I just get them all. I love Twisbees. They make me feel like the rainbow, yeah, this satisfies like the artsy side of me to see all of this laid out. And some of these need cleaning, but I put them in here just for the sake of being complete. So yeah, I've got lots of Twisbees. I love my Twisbees. They are definitely a thing. And yeah, there are more coming eventually because that's just that's just what I do. I don't wanna have all of the, the Twisbees. I don't have the newest one yet than the um, Sapphire one, because it just came out. I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna sweat it. The most recent to my Twisby collection, oh, we're missing one. 
is this one, the um, the black um, Diamond 580 ALR. And the other most recent addition is this one, the um, Royal Jade and Rose Gold, most recent Twisby additions to the collection. So yeah, I'm on a mission. So I have a whole list. If there is a Twisby that I'm missing, I kind of keep an eye out. And if the price is reasonable, I pull the trigger. But yeah, I'm not stressing it either. But yes, I do want to have a little rainbow and I'm, I'm just about there, right? So those are the Twisbees. Let's move along. All right, we are in the home stretch. It's a lot of pens. Okay, I have a few Cavecos and a few oddball pens. Over here, ah, my first Caveco was this iridescent one because it was just so cute. This was one of the early pens that I picked up in my first month or two of being in the fountain pen rabbit hole. And this one has got a fine nib. So while it was a good writing experience, it wasn't my favorite because of the fine nib. I have to be in that fine nib state of mind to really enjoy the pen and not feel biased against it. But I like the way it looks and I could swap the nib, but with the price point of the pen, I probably won't. If anything, I would just rehome this and get another one if I wanted to replace it with the nib I like. But yeah, I like that. The, um, ooh, take it easy. My favorite of the bunch, which I used recently um, in December, were this one, the Macchiato. This has a double broad nib. I totally enjoyed writing with this. I used the black ink cartridge that came with it first, and it was just so good. I was like, wow, this is amazing. I totally loved it. And then the funny thing is the next ink I put in it was horrible. It was like, what the heck? Is it even the same pen? But it was the ink, you know? I mean, I used the, the Caveco Black and it was great. And then I forget which ink it was that was so horrible. I would I could look and see what it was, but it, was, it wasn't good. So I immediately cleaned out the pen and put a different ink in and it was fine. But I loved writing with that double broad. That's my first and only double broad so far. And then this one was inked in December and probably January. I think it's got a medium nib and I inked it up with Diamine Ink Vent Bah Humbug from the 2023 calendar. Ooh, I got the teeny tiny converter. This is so funny. It's like, why y'all? But you know, it's a, it's a tiny pen. It's easier to use the, the um, cartridge and clean it out. But yeah, I do have one converter. That's my one and only. I'm not buying any more of those. But oh my goodness, Bah Humbug in this pen was freaking amazing. I loved it. It was so good. And reds like that are not my jam per se, but in the season, oh my goodness, I totally loved it. I haven't used the green one in a while, but yeah, they all have clips, so they're all dressed nicely. And I, I still like them all, and they get to stay. Sailor. Somewhere out there is the Sailor pen for me. And it's not in my case, I'll tell you that. This is the cool. I picked this up on Amazon, and it's got, I don't remember if it's a fine or an extra fine nib, and like I said, my eyesight is so suspect. It's um, medium fine, medium fine, I don't know. I didn't enjoy it when I used it. I'm more of a medium kind of girl, and this is a Japanese pen, so it wasn't great, but I'm gonna use it again and see how I feel about it. And if we're not getting along, we're not getting along. I will find you a new home and someone to love you the way you deserve to be loved. I also have this one. This has a very long name. It's very pretty, but same kind of experience that fine nib and I are not besties. That was the only thing. 
but yes, I like the pen. I like how it looks. It's cute. It's very girly, but the nib and I, it's too fine for me. So I don't know if I'll keep it. I may also find a new home for that one, and that's fine. Every nib is not for everyone. What else? And the other side is much better because by the time most of these were purchased, I figured myself out very well. And over here we've got, oh, a few Estes. Uh, I don't remember which YouTuber I saw where I saw their SD and I'm like, oh, that's so cute. I like that. But this was not the first. Actually, that was the second. This was the first. My very first Estabrook SD. This was it. This felt good. I totally enjoyed this pen. And obviously, I haven't cleaned it. Yes, I put it in here for the video. It's still got a teeny bit of Wayfarer in it. It had been inked with Wayfarer for several months. I don't even know how many, but since at least last fall, I would just clean it and re-ink it. I think I've cleaned it two or three times since I've gotten it. And I got it, maybe it was in the summer, I forget. But yeah, I love this. I love this pen. This style, this size, this writing experience, this is what I like. I totally enjoy this pen. So after I got this one, then I got this one. I have the um, lavender, uh, lilac, not lavender, same energy. And that's in my currently inked. And then I most recently picked up this white one. And this has a broad nib. So good times ahead for me. I couldn't decide if I really wanted a white pen because I really like color. But honestly, I kinda, I think I wanted something white to break up the color sometimes. And I don't have too many white pens. So now I have a white pen representing for the um, break up the color group. This is my favorite. These are my colors. This I picked up this pen earlier this month. It's um, Leonardo, speak English girl, Leonardo Memento Zero Grande 2.0 and from the Galatica collection, it's Planetary Nebula. Yeah, it's a lot. I call it Nebula. I love this pen. It's a piston filler, got a lovely ink window, a medium nib, and it will be in my currently inked next month because it's taking a lot of willpower not to ink it up right now. I don't know what ink's going in it yet, and I purposely don't know what ink's going in it yet because I would put ink in it already. But it will be inked and you will see it in my next video. <laughs> I love it. This this is totally my jam. And I have to say, the pen that inspired me to get this was one that was released previously. Um, Mother of Pearl. If there is such a thing in my head as a grail pen, I think that's my grail pen because... I love the way it looks, and if I can find a pen that looks like that, it doesn't have to be the Leonardo. That's the look I like. So, yeah, when I saw this, and it has the colors, and it kind of has that same kind of energy, yes! And um, Terry from Drawn and Scribblings told me, the pen is still available. You can still get it. And so, yeah, now I have it, and I'm so happy. I love this pen. Do you hear the smile on my face? And I showed y'all the um, the Pilot E95S. I love this pen. It's my only gold nib so far. I'll get to gold nibs. I'm not stressing it because you know what? There are so many of them out there. What will be the first one? Probably a Pilot, to be honest. Probably a Pilot. Yeah, that verdigree looks pretty good. So that, that may be next. Or it could be a Pelican. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not worrying about it. I have plenty of things to keep me busy. And just to round it out, I don't know how I could leave out this pen. It is my Le bon 325 in the color Sakura. I love this pen. It was the first pen that I spent more than $100 on. 
and for me that was the slippery slope because there were lots of pens that I had seen that were more than $100, but I wouldn't go that far. I stopped well short of $100, but once I got this one, yeah, I was careening down the fountain hole hole <laughs> of spending more than $100 on a pen, which is so not hard to do. But I love this pen. It's got a broad nib. And yeah, she's a great writer. I love it. I used it last summer and into the early fall. And then I put her away because she's just so pink and pretty. And it didn't feel right to use it in the fall. It just felt, I don't know, like I should be using a different color. Like, like this. <laughs> anyway, I left it out and I couldn't do that because she was just there not saying anything. Like, don't forget me. So yes, that's my Le Bon 325 in the color Sakura. My currently inked pens are here, plus one more. This one y'all haven't seen yet. It is um, my only Monteverde pen, Mountains of the World. And this pen has a stub nib, rose gold trim, but the, <laughs> the nib is silver, I don't know. But um, I haven't used it in a while. I think I need to pull it back out. It's got a stub, like I said, and I just like the way it looked because I realized, you know, I have a color that I really like, that I really go for, and it's the blue greens and the teals and the turquoises. Those are my jam. And that's what I mostly have. And purples. I like purples. That's what I mostly have in my currently inked. This um, This is the oddball. This is clear. But that's what I mostly have. And this pen... Pilot, no, the um, Platinum Placer. I bought this pen mm, early in the second quarter of my fountain pen life and never inked it up because I was buying other more flashy looking pens, I guess you could say. And I just used this for the first time this month and it's been a good writer. It's got a medium nib, but it's on the finer side of medium but it's been good, it doesn't skip or do anything terrible. And I like it, but it's, um, I have another platinum too. Oh, we don't wanna leave out any platinums. <laughs> oh, a platinum preppy, because I heard they were so good and I didn't have one, so yeah, it's fine. It's been a good pen. When I first inked this with just the um, cartridge that came with it, I didn't push the cartridge in far enough. It didn't click into place and the pen would would skip. And I was like, what the heck? This is not so great. I don't like this, blah, blah, blah. So I I kept the ink, of course. I cleaned out the, um, the section and I was gonna just put it away. And I said, no, let me just try again. And that's when I realized I didn't push it all the way in. And this has been a good writer. So it's one of the pens that I just kind of keep handy to jot things down. And a lot of the most, um, most of the least expensive pens I have, I just kind of jot with. I just jot things down. I'm always making notes. And I do that a lot with like this pen, this pen, the um, Pilot Kakuno. I love these. They're so great. These are my jotters. And um, the Jin Haos. I have, I'm not jotting lately with the Jin Hao because I got the new Palm Pilot. <laughs> and I've got this one and this one. But I will be back to these probably in the summer because the colors of these are just so, so bright. I am so all over the place. And if you've made it this far, I thank you for putting up with me. This was my first Leonardo, Leonardo Memento Zero in the Aloha colorway. I realize I feel about this pen the way I feel about the Estabrooks. I really love these. I love these. And because there are so many, there's much more variety in the styles of these than the Estabrook pens. And there are other Estabrooks than the Estes, but there are much more with the Leonardo's. And I feel myself, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the rabbit hole, but because the, um, the barrier to entry is a little bit higher as you go in, that's going to be a slow roll with the Leos. This was my most recent 
mine until I picked up the other one. Oh my God, I cracked myself up because I was not planning. I wasn't planning to get this pen. This was an unplanned purchase. Just to be clear. This was planned. And um, this is the Ferrore and Aqua Petra. And it's a steel nib, colored gold, and I love it. My Estabrook Esty and Lilac. And yeah, y'all have seen the rest. So that's it. These are my pens. I have not counted them. I don't need to know. These, these pens are my therapy, and I totally enjoy the journey. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day. Bye-bye.